Winnipeg has a growing African community, with many creating various organizations to represent the vast number of countries within the continent. Pan-African Legacy unites the cultures of 14 countries from Southern Africa. Although those countries have many differences, they also share some similarities, and Pan-African Legacy is looking to celebrate those differences and similarities while engaging younger generations with their culture and heritage. My name is Kennedy, Kennedy Gudu, and uh, director at Pan-African Legacy. And um, uh, this is an organization which is a grassroots organization uh, that came about because um, as part of the African community, particularly focusing on uh, Southern Africa in general, uh, we found that there is very little representation of our culture within um, Manitoba and uh, maybe to some extent Canada-wide. And we felt that we needed a space that we can make our culture um, the soul of the community because... Um, you know, we do have and we do come across a lot of uh, kids within the community that have lost completely their language, for example. Mm -hmm. They have lost the basic norms and values um, that run in the community. And we felt that that gap must be closed and uh, we need to do something about it and hence Pan-African legacy. Um, is there to bridge that gap. Yeah, you're right. It's incredibly important to preserve language and culture, uh, and you have to be deliberate about it. If you're not active in that preservation, it all too quickly fades. I know that's something that's happened in my family. Our language of Plotdeutsch, low German, has been lost throughout the generations. My parents barely know it, and I know none of it. So... It's if you're not deliberate in those efforts, they're gone. And I think we've heard the same thing within lots of cultural communities here in Winnipeg, whether that's the Arabic community, Latino community. They're seeing that a lot of their kids now are just kind of into, yeah, integrating within Canadian society yeah. and not maintaining that cultural, that cultural connection, which is so important and an aspect of Canada that makes it unique, the diverse cultures here that have the opportunity to thrive and flourish inside of the yeah. Canada as a whole. Yes, that's right. You know, I have always admired uh, a lot of other cultures around that I see in Winnipeg or some Asian communities. Mm -hmm. They seem to be doing way better in preserving their culture than we do uh, because you kind of see their kids quite active in their community languages, for example. Uh, and you always say, what is it about my people that we are not able to value what what, and where we come from and preserve this culture? So it, it has always been a concern for me. And um, we believe that Pan-African uh, legacy will will make a difference in this in this uh, role. Walk me through some of the things that you do at this organization. What sort of programs or initiatives do you have? And then we'll get into what sort of things you've seen changing since your role there. Okay, so we have focused mainly on the young generation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have. Um, uh, done activities and uh, gatherings that encourage um, interaction uh, between the young people and the older generation and go through our, uh, you know, um, cultural activities, uh, be it language, be it uh, knowing your background and totems and where they come from and um, just making sure that in their way of doing things they need to realize where they come from and carry this legacy through to their families. Some of them are getting to a stage where they are about to 
start their own families. Mm -hmm. It's our role to ensure that they make it a, a, a parental role to educate their offspring in terms of uh, where we come from and uh, keep that uh, fire burning uh, in the young ones. We also have um, uh, focused on the older generation mm -hmm. because they are the, uh, the glue that... Yeah, they're the ones who have the knowledge, the knowledge, the history. Exactly, exactly. So their role in there is to come in and uh, educate the young ones and also um, educate the, the little kids so that they understand uh, how things are done from a general perspective of the of, uh, our African culture. Especially getting younger children involved, fosters that love and imagination towards something way earlier on than exactly. if they're like 14, 15, and then you're dealing with the teenager phase where you're not going to get through to them for quite, exactly. quite some time. Exactly, yeah. Our coordinator in uh, in the program says culture is the soul of the community and uh, we need to work on it and make sure that, um, you know, every everybody values our our, our culture and things that uh, happen across the oceans and uh, just make sure that uh, when somebody or our kids visit, they are not completely lost in, 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 in that culture. Well, yeah, you don't want to be a fish out of water, right? When yeah. you go there where you show up and you're like, I don't understand anything here. It's like, what is this? What is this? Like, what is this food sort of thing? You want to have some sort of connection. So when you do visit, you know, it's not too difficult to immerse yourself. Uh, exactly. And uh, this is the point. And uh, we also try and bring in the uh, food aspect into the uh, gatherings that we do. An important part of any culture. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, the community does bring different foods for bring and share uh, at these gatherings. Uh, they bring trinkage, they bring, you know, whatever uh, traditional uh, uh, starch fo starchy foods or meat or vegetable as they are preserved and um, uh, prepared uh, in our culture. What are some different African cuisines? I can't say I'm too familiar, but what sort of items, let's say we're having a gathering and people are bringing things in, what sort of meats or dishes or different prepared styles would be there? Okay, so generally you find that uh, our ways of preserving food is somewhat a bit different from Canada, but that's because generally in the traditional African way of living, we don't generally use uh, refrigeration, for example. And you have to find some way to preserve the yes. food. Yes, and you find that uh, our food is preserved over a fire, for example, dried uh, meat or dried vegetables, which are dried in the sun, uh, dried tomato, and generally... Uh, prepared with um, uh, not a lot of oil, but perhaps some things like peanut butter, uh, sometimes just uh, animal fat, um, just to make it taste better. And mm -hmm. so generally that's what you will find. And also we do local brewed uh, drink, which is... Um, uh, mainly out of corn or millet, mm -hmm. and um, we at least make sure our kids understand and uh, know how to prepare those kinds of foods uh, if given an opportunity to do that. Well, that's so important in in terms of providing those life skills because I think that we notice it immensely out here in Western countries like okay. Canada, the United States, of how many kids don't know how to sew on a button, uh, fix any of their clothes. They don't know how to pickle or jar any food. Exactly, yeah. And they don't have any connection to things. It's just whatever's at the supermarket. Yeah. So in this sense, it also creates the 
ability of independence because they can make things for themselves then. Yeah, that's the idea. And uh, one of the uh, youths that, you know, uh, or I would say a group of young girls have a strong interest in uh, meat preservation and they have had to go and buy things like um, a dehydrator, for example. But that's because they can't quite go out and do it the way we do because yes, we do it on a It's hard to dry things in the sun in the middle <laughs> of winter. That's right. So they've gone ahead and bought a um, dehydrator and they are able to preserve their meats the African way or just, you know, the built-on way where you dehydrating meats and vegetables too. And, uh, and it's working well for them. And uh, although sometimes... African food is kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's um, smoked. Oh, smoked, yes. Smoked, kind, yeah, because the fire is generally in a, in a hut and it smokes everything. So the taste does differ from something that's uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a dehydrator, but, mm -hmm. but the results are very encouraging. So, and we are... Uh, we encouraging them to keep on that track. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of different tools. I think you could go to like Home Hardware or Rona or something. I think they have smokers. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. We can look at that and see uh, how that looks like. I did come across the dehydrator at uh, one of these uh, mm -hmm. outlets. Yeah, but we did find a, a dehydrator. Yeah, there are definitely tools out there that can help achieve something that you might not be able to do just out because not everyone has like a like a fire pit out in their yard or anything. But uh, yeah, I know a lot of people use smokers because it's so fun to try like different woods and different things to get different flavors in your meats. We will definitely look at the smokers for sure going oh, forward this summer. Amazing. Yeah. And I think they come with like different wood chips and things that you can try. Like there's like cherry wood and things or like maple or hickory just to it can change the entire palette of it, which is all which is a lot of fun. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, Southern Africa is kind of the region that you uh, encompass. What sort of all countries are we looking at that are represented with people coming in and the different cultures? Okay, generally, Southern Africa is comprised of about 14 countries. Mm -hmm. The main ones being uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Botswana, Angola, um, Democratic Republic of the Congo, mm -hmm. um, Zambia, Malawi, uh, Tanzania, um, but of course it includes uh, offshore uh, countries like Mauritius and Madagascar. They are a little bit way out of um, mm -hmm. our place, but they are classified as Southern Africa. But yeah, countries around the southern half or the southern third of Africa. Do you find uh, out of these 14 countries, the cultures can uh, differ greatly? Because, you know, when we're looking at Europe, you know, you have like France, Germany, Spain, they're all right next to each other, but vastly different. <laughs> they are vastly different. You can say that again, but uh, they are general uh, traits are and practices that are similar. I can tell you the languages are entirely different. We've got hundreds of languages in that demarcation, let alone in one country, we've got different languages. Uh, for example, uh, Zimbabwe has got no less than 14 languages, South Africa the same, Zambia uh, maybe a lot more. DRC is way bigger and um, I wouldn't understand a lot of their vernacular languages. Mm -hmm. And even at official languages, they are Francophone and the other countries are Anglophone. So there is a wide difference. But in terms of the way we do certain things uh, culturally, we are a lot more similar uh, than perhaps as you move north of Africa, which is probably has got a lot more influence of Arabic. Mm -hmm. Also, there is West Africa, 
a lot closer to what we do in Southern Africa, but uh, significantly different too. Yeah, I think that's important to just clarify for our audience because, you know, there's a lot of people, you watch videos online, they're like, wait, Africa's a continent? It is. It is. And a lot of people think Africa is uh, is one homogeneous mm -hmm. um, unit. but it, Which is an entire disservice. Yeah to the region exactly but uh, you know it's um it's 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 a big continent and as they say the size of uh, africa is uh, uh, the size of europe put together and uh, the americas put together and they all fit into into africa so it's a big continent for sure because i know when we're looking at the traditional style of map, it makes a lot more of the Northern Hemisphere look a lot larger than it is. I, I never knew about this until fairly recently that uh, that representation is not actually what it should be. Here's uh, India, here's China, and the United States, exactly. all fitting inside of Africa. That's uh, quite interesting that, uh, you know, just to cross that uh, uh, top half of uh, the Sahara Desert to, to the Mediterranean, it's uh, thousands of kilometers uh, to traverse that. Yeah, just Northern Africa, you're basically crossing the entire United States, and then there's still a middle and a bottom part yes, there. Yes, that's right, yeah. So it is a vast, vast continent for sure. That vastness is represented within the diverse cultures and things. And I think that's probably a cool part about the Pan-African legacy is that you have the opportunity to connect with these different parts of Southern African cultures and, you know, celebrate the similarities in what you have exactly. close, but also learn from each other in those diversities. Exactly. That's the whole point. And, uh, you know, when, uh, when we meet as different groups, we share and we learn from each other and uh, just make sure that uh, we highlight the similarities and enjoy what is common amongst ourselves as different cultures, subcultures with, within, uh, within our, our Southern African region. Yeah. What sort of response are you getting from the African community here in Winnipeg specifically? You're mentioning, you know, bringing in the elderly to share and pass on that knowledge and then getting youth and younger peoples engaged. What sort of things are you hearing from these two different demographics? Very encouraging. And uh, we recently had um, a, a musical uh, gathering. Oh, that's exciting. And uh, this comprised of individuals from Mozambique, individuals from South Africa, individuals from Jamaica. Uh, they joined us uh, in that in that effort and also individuals from Zambia. And uh, it was uh, a scorching uh, kind of um, a musical presentation. Mm -hmm. Also, like I said, we have had um, uh, gatherings for youths, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just bring and share with food and uh, enjoying sports. We had a big gathering uh, last spring um, and that went well. And generally there's um, people that will come from these different countries, particularly uh, Zambia, the Malawi community, the Zimbabwe and um, uh, Botswana too, and, and, uh, and Democratic Republic of the Congo. And uh, you, uh, you know, find um, solace in that the youths are engaging and are enjoying themselves uh, while sharing uh, all their cultures. What's the hope for the organization looking ahead? Are there any big plans or initiatives that you're hoping to start? And I guess just overhaul, what is the goal? Okay, so the goal at the end of the day is we are hoping that we will be able to regenerate our languages and get our youngsters taught uh, these languages in their diversity. 
uh, as you know after school kind of gatherings uh, as well as uh, uh, getting the opportunity to uh, take care of young kids uh, for those of our parents that actually find themselves having to go to work and then um, you know, some community individual will take turns to uh, school these kids in an environment where they learn things uh, until they can be picked to go home uh, once the parents are done with their work. So that's one of the uh, major activities that we are focusing on achieving in the next one to two years okay. um, uh, so that we are able to get a gathering place uh, where we can uh, get the youngsters to come in and learn after their school activities as well as taking care of these kids mm -hmm. uh, for those uh, parents that might not be able to otherwise leave their kids unattended as they go to work. Community raising and community teaching, I think, is often understated, where oftentimes it's just, okay, just this parental unit raises the kids and then they go to school. But I think there's so much more that we can learn as individuals from each other when we're in those learning circles, having opportunities to connect with way more kids yeah. um, at an early age, especially learning from different people and perspectives, it exactly. only is beneficial to you. Exactly, yeah. So we have had um, a huge interest in uh, one of the programs that we do, which is uh, the teaching the kids uh, musical instruments, mm -hmm. um, you know, the traditional um, instruments from Africa, mm -hmm. like the marimbas, like the biras, and, um, and uh, you know, what you call the shekas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids are finding that very... Um, uh, interesting to learn, uh, but it's not only limited. The interesting bit is that um, uh, when we showcased this at uh, a function at the Manitoba Hydro place there, we had a lot of interest from other people, from Canadians generally, that are interested in, in that particular program. And for us, it can only be encouraging that we've got a lot of people in the community that are interested in learning with and the African culture. Yeah, it's not just the community you're covering, but it's people on the outside want to learn. Exactly. And that means, you know, there's interest, potentially more funding in the, uh, in the future, more supports to help the organization grow. That's what we hope for. And um, we will continue to work hard at this and uh, make a success of it for sure. So if someone's interested in participating in any of these programs or wanting to help support the Pan-African legacy, well, where do they go? Where can they find out more information? Okay, so we do have a website uh, that they can go to and um, people can also give us a call. Um, and uh, we also have an office at um, um, 85 uh, Gary, uh, Gary Street um, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And that website is www.panafricanlegacy.org. That's, that's it. You got it. Kennedy, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm really excited to hear more about the future of the Pan-African legacy. I will be happy to, you know, pop in sometime uh, uh, at the beginning of the summer and check on you and see how things go and update you on our progress. Amazing. I'm looking forward to it. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media, reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.